Ava? Brad, you spoke about your frustration after last game with all of the text that we saw tonight. Did you get the sense that that was contained to this game or it was building emotion that, that kind of the team had been dealing with? Uh, first person I learned to say was Jesus Christ. Um, no, I feel like all that energy was for tonight. Um, it was a lot of a lot of BS going on out there just in terms of our calls and texts. It was just too many texts on both sides. So it was uh, it was all about tonight. It was frustration on everybody's, everybody's side. And for you personally, especially in the first half, you've spoken about your slow starts. What wasn't going right early on tonight, especially? I'm human. Uh, I just didn't have it going. I uh, didn't have too many legs in front of me. So felt better in the second half, got them up under me, but uh, I'm here when I had a, I had a horrible night, I had a crap night. So I'm taking on a chain. I gotta, I gotta be better. I told the guys I gave them nothing tonight, so I gotta be a lot better. Fred, hey Brad, uh, you've talked kind of on and off this year about occasional spacing problems you guys have had on offense, where the middle of the floor gets cramped. Just like, what's the fix for that? Or at least, how do you help that along so it's not as obvious when it's happening? Uh, running the floor better. Uh, I think guys understanding their positions, understanding, uh, you know, when we get out in, in transition or after made baskets, you know, we're we're getting out to attack and we got we to gotta do better, you know, creating driving lanes for Russ and I and for guys to create, uh, you know, off the break. And... Uh, and be and be more cognizant of it. I think sometimes it's not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes we cut at the wrong times, so it could just be like just a timing thing and not IQ, IQ type thing. Just knowing when and when not to cut, understanding you know when to you know kind of chase after the ball or you know when to you know overload one side or not. So it's just it's just being better at you know understanding and just reading the game. You know knowing where Russ likes to attack, knowing where I like to attack, and you know just getting a better feel. It sounds like you're kind of getting at it a little bit, but you guys have talked a lot about communication on defense. Is is there, I mean, I know offense is a lot more kind of intuition and, and reading the game and that kind of stuff, but is there a way that communication or at least kind of like just telepathy on the floor can be better? I, I missed your last part, what'd you say? Yeah. Is there a way that just like communication or at least reading off of your teammates can be better offensively? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's getting to our spots, uh, cutting harder, setting screens, you know, being decoy sometimes. And it's everybody. It's not, it's not just going to take one guy. Like tonight, Cam Reddish was face guarding me the whole night. And so we got to – sometimes we get stagnant. But okay, what, what's B doing? What, how can we get B the ball instead of just playing ball? You know, so we just got to be better with that, understand that everybody has a green light to be aggressive and, and attack and, you know, and knock down shots when they have them. So – I think at times, sometimes we get too caught up in, okay, let's try to get beat the ball when it may be difficult at times. So just play basketball. Ace. Brad, obviously I'm sure you're used to, you know, guys coming back from injury. Uh, but when it's like a collection of players at once that are all on a different timeline than the rest of the team, what is that like as you guys try to develop cohesion and chemistry? Uh, it, it was a little tough uh, because, you know, you have guys on minutes right away. So you, you understand when I was going to throw them right into the fire. You know, it's a recipe for injury. You know, so we, we do a better cognitive job of just trying to mend guys back into the lineup. Uh, but it, it's going to be tough, you know, because, you know, we've been playing a certain way. And, you know, these guys haven't played in about three weeks, almost four weeks. So it's, it's going to be tough on them. They got to get their win back the legs back under them, you know, get, get a better rhythm and feel for the game. So it's, it's going to be an adjustment for sure. Uh, but we got to do it rapidly on the fly. And as you guys deal with all of that and, you know, so many unusual circumstances this year, and now, now you sit three and 12, just what's kind of the state of the team right now as you guys try to take stock and turn this around? We're still pissed off. That's not changing. Uh, you know, I feel like even if we won, we'd still be a little pissed off. You know, so it's, we we understand that you know nobody's going to feel sorry for us. We don't want that, uh, you know. So we got to dig ourselves out of this hole and, and be ready to go come Sunday. You know, it doesn't get any easier. 
it doesn't get any easier. You know, they added two games to our schedule uh, on our road trip. So we got to we gotta be ready to go and understand it's going to be tough and understand we're going to need everybody collectively in order to get these wins and scrap them together. Kellen. Hey, Brad. Uh, Coach Brooks was talking about how even, you know, despite all, like, the injuries and the losses, that he's still very confident in this group, in, in the team. So I guess I just want to get your take. Like, how, how, do you, how confident are you in this team still, despite the record and, you know, kind of the injuries and all you've been going through? It's always tough, you know, with you see TB go down, we have COVID, eight of our guys are out. Uh, it's very easy to just fall into that trap of saying, oh, okay, this is when, this is what we're doing. This is the year we're having. But we, we weren't full strength. We didn't have everything. We didn't have a lot of practices to come back. You know, those aren't excuses, but, you know, this is just reality and facts. But, you know, we just – it's tough, but for me, I feel the same way as coach. Like I'm confident in our guys. I'm confident in myself. I'm confident in everybody to be able to come together and, and rally these wins together. Like Garrison said last game, we can't have the mentality that we're three and 11. You know, we feel like we're better than that. We know we're better than that. So it's, you know, we just got to go out and do it. Neil. Hey, Brad, a, a little bit of a non-game question. I was rereading the Players' Tribune article you had written in 2017 about the relationship you had with your mom. Obviously, she's very close with how you were brought up. I'm curious, is that relationship still the same where she's texting you all the time, even right now, and giving you adver or thoughts to how to get through this adversity? And how has that relationship continued to grow in your NBA career? Well, I, I would say it's a lot different now. I have, I have two boys, two boys, so my mom, she kind of respects my adulthood and kind of lets me grow a little, a little bit more now. Uh, but she's always going to be the toughest coach I've ever had. I always say that. Like, still to this day, she's, she's going to be in my ear and tell me what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, and, you know, make sure I'm correcting it. But, uh, I'm not – I wouldn't say I'm necessarily in, like, a mental funk or anything or whatever it is you're trying to necessarily get at. Like, it's, a, it's an adverse time. Like, we all know how to deal with it. Uh, you know, you know, it defines your character and to see your retaliation in, in times of adversity. So uh, that's all this is. Thank you, Brad.